talked about the fact there of, of faith and belief being one and the same, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, all of that being in the word believe. And, and so when you think about the word love and believe in this verse, they go together and they fit together. And the question is, do you have faith? Do you trust in the Lord? I mean, it's easy just to say, I believe in Jesus, or I believe in God, or this, that, and the other. But is there a difference in your life because of your belief, because of your trust? Um, do you really know and believe that Jesus is the only way? I, one of our men called me this week, actually texted me, and then I ended up calling him. And he was in deep discussion with, uh, with someone who was telling him that basically he was not saved because of the uh, speaking in tongues and being baptized in a certain way and certain words. And, and uh, so he was in this debate and uh, was wondering about how, and we were just talking back and forth in the midst of that. Um, and folks, I want to tell you now, based on the Word of God, not on a man's gospel, but when you read the Word of God, listen to me very clear, because we have a lot of different folks in representation here, those that are listening. When you read the Word of God, I want you to understand something this morning. This is not David Williams' words. It's not some theologian's words. It's God's words written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says that Jesus and Jesus alone is salvation. It's not Jesus plus tongues. It's not Jesus plus money. It's not Jesus plus baptism. It's not Jesus plus law. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Anytime we try to incorporate man's works, the only thing that you and I can do as a man or a woman in regards to salvation is surrender unto a holy God. That's why the Bible says, die to self. You have to die to self. Jesus is the way. And you need to listen. When, when, you're, when you're listening to somebody online or you're watching on the TV, if it's Jesus plus anything else, get away from it. It's not what the Bible says. And then if you find one word that's contradictory to the Word of God, then it's not truth. If you believe the Word of God is truth. And so you need to listen to that. And, and we talked about exalting Jesus, looking upon him, lifting up him up, and just putting him in high regard, ultimate regard, focus, if you will. Um, and the Word of God, what we read this morning, when you disregard the truth that Jesus is the way, then the Bible says in verse 18, those who reject him, you're condemned already. You're condemned, you're judged already based upon what you've done. God's done his part, and we're going to talk more about that. And here's the thing about God's love. People say, well, you know, God's got to love, so I'll just do what I want to. God loves me, and everything's going to be all right. No, untruth. Now, there's several um, untruths or, or misdirected thoughts, um, meanings, and stuff like that when it comes to this, because here it is. Some believe that God can't or will not love them because of who they are or what they've done. That's simply not true. E even in the midst of verse 18, when you read those words there, and he said, he who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Even if you're judged already and you're listening and you're in this building, whatever, and you don't believe in God, God still loves you. That's the truth. That's the word of God. But some believe that God cannot love them because of who they are, uh, because of what they've done. Simply not true. God can save you. God will change your life. Um, God loves you. When does that love actually stop? I mean, when you've got opportunities to turn to God all the way till you die, and if you haven't turned to God when you die, it's over with. You don't have another opportunity. The second thing that, that, we, that some people are caught up in that's not true is um, on the other side of that is the fact that God loves them and cares for them uh, because of who they are, based on who they are, based on what they've done. Uh, that's not true either. God, our, God's love is not based on our works. God's, God's word is not conditional, or God's love is not conditional on who we are. 
The fact is, according to the Word of God, God desires that everyone be saved. Red, yellow, black, and white are all precious in His sight, okay? And, and He says that we place our faith and trust in Jesus. We believe that Jesus is God's Son, that He died on a cross, that He died for our sin, okay? He didn't die because he, just because He loved us. Jesus came and He died because that was His mission. And the cross was where He had to go. It didn't just happen by happenstance. God sent Jesus to die on Calvary's cross. That was the purpose of him coming, okay? God loved me and you. God loved man as his creation, and he saw us separated because of sin in our life, and he had given us a way back to him, but man couldn't keep the law. Man couldn't keep what was there to be able to be reconciled unto God. And so God had to make a way, and that way was Jesus Christ. And he sent Jesus to die on the cross. That was his mission. Um, you know, and, and, and so when you think about it, it was just, it's important. I mean, go back and listen to the Bible study if you didn't this morning, Brad teaching. And it was talking about commitment to the mission and the fact that you and I is based out of Romans, Romans chapter 10, that you and I ought to be committed to the mission of sharing Jesus Christ, committed to the mission of doing what God has called us to do. Uh, to, to share Jesus with our friends and our people that, you know, um, that we want to see G people come to Jesus. It, it's important there. And so God's love is not based on condition. It's not based on status. It's not based on stature, how important you are. It's not based on that. God loves us because he created us, all right? Before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, God created, uh, God knew us. And then he breathed life into us. And that heartbeat started just a few days after conception. And there was life. And God loved us. And God cares for us. But he saw us separated. So he sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross. And the only way that you can have eternal life is through Jesus Christ. His love is universal. His salvation is universal. Uh, people talk about the exclusiveness of the Bible. But it's also inclusive. It includes everybody. Everybody has an opportunity, all right, to receive Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus Christ, then, then judgment comes according to the word of God. And so uh, God's love is, is universal. He cares for all. Um, some people really struggle with that very thought there about uh, the fact of, of God's love. I mean, 1 John, go and look at that. Several people have been asking about 1 John. I commented about it, um, that if you're doubting your salvation, go and look at 1 John. Do a little study about that. When you get in chapter 4, it talks about God is love, and, and it, it really ex, uh, expels it out. And so I want you to think in terms of that this morning, realizing that you're not saved because God loved you. You're saved because of the cross. Forgiveness of sin happens because of the bloodshed that took place on the cross, Jesus Christ. That's where forgiveness comes, and you've got to go there. If you think you're okay just because God loves you, you're headed to a sinner's hell. Just know that. Only in Jesus Christ are you saved. Only in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and life. No other man goes to their father except through him. So realize that. So here's three things I want to give you this morning. The first one, I want to talk to you about the greatness of God's love. How great is the Father's love? That's another song. We didn't sing that this morning. But how great is the Father's love? Uh, I mean, God's love reaches far and near. Think about it, all the way from heaven's glory right down here to the depths of the earth. Um, God's love is there, unconditional in nature. Um, thinking about the, the fact of the world, 7.8 billion people in the world, uh, 4, million, uh, 4 billion or so in the United States, 3.5 billion or whatever, 4%. Um, statistics tell us that two-thirds of the world's population don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Think about that. Over 5 billion, almost six, not too far from 6 billion people that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And, and, and God loves every one of them. And you think about the one that, think about the person that you dislike the most. God loves them. Think about your enemy. God loves them. Think, think about the worst uh, what you would classify as the worst person, God loves them. And that's tough for us. I mean, we, 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 we can't get through uh, our physical features and our physical thoughts to realize, hey, God loves them. God can change their life. He's got to get through to them, and he can get through to them if they will open 
their mind and let God just pierce their heart. I mean, God loves you for who you are. God loves them. God hates sin and the different things that people do that cause them to be outside the will of God and certainly outside of uh, what Jesus would set as, uh, as the um, guidelines, if you will, surrendering to him. Certainly those evil things that are done, if they're not of God, they're evil. We don't like to think about that, but God loves the world. God cares about each one with, with a selfless love. I mean, he, he, he is about that. And, and when you think about that costly love of redemption on the cross, you think about that, that greatness of God's love. I mean, just right now, just take a moment. Let me just stop. Wherever you are, in the building and online, just kind of close your eyes a minute and just think about God's love. Think about how much he loves you. Get a picture of the cross. Get a picture of the hand of God on your God loves you. God sees you right where you are. Why don't you, I mean, just think about that love. Think about that picture of that little baby. Just the practice of God. For God so loved you. It's the greatness of God's love. You know, so many people are lonely. Uh, speaking with somebody this week and and they were just talking about depression and how lonely. And, and you know, this, this thing with the virus and all this from March forward has created some mountains as far as depression and different things, loneliness and separatedness and all of that kind of stuff. But you know, God knows where you are. And God loves you. And God cares for you. And God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. His only begotten son. And he knew when he sent him from heaven, he knew he was going to be born in a virgin's womb. He knew that he was going to live 33 years on earth. He knew what he was going to go through, and he knew he was going to die on the cross. And he sent him. And Jesus came out of obedience, and he went to the cross. Think about that love. Think about it as you leave here in a little bit, and you head home, and maybe you sit down and eat lunch, or you go out to a restaurant or whatever. Think about that love. Sometimes we don't even take time to just say, God, thank you. Thank you for who I am. Thank you, Lord, for making me. Thank you, God, for giving me a way. You think about the greatness of God's love. Romans 5, 8, for while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for us. He gave his son Jesus to die for us. What a demonstration. Now, there's not a one of us in here, I don't think, that would give one of our children up, watch them hang on an old rugged cross, or somebody who would spit on them, put a crown. You know, I don't even like to get a thorn in my finger, much less a whole crown of thorns on my head. God did all that for us. The greatness of his love. It's amazing to think about what God does. God loves you. Don't ever forget that. The second thing that I want to give you this morning is God's consistency, the consistency of his love. It's not unconditional love. It's a, it, it's a real love. You know, with, with men, with women, it's uh, conditional a lot of times, right? Uh, you do what I want you to do. You meet my needs, then I'll meet your needs, and I'll love you as long as you please me, as long as you do what I want done. Um, you take care of my wants. Uh, it's a performance-based love, really, man's love. It's more of a performance base. It's that human love. But I I'm thankful God's love is not based on my performance. I mean, when you closed your eyes a moment ago, wherever you are, and you think about God's love, I mean, Think about where you were, where you've been. Maybe there's some things that you thought. How does God ever love you? And he does. Because it's not based on our performance. It's based on God's righteousness in Christ. It's based on the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. And his love is so consistent. Same yesterday, same today, same tomorrow. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians. You know, Jim took all the scriptures there a little bit ago, and we hadn't talked about the service, but I was listening to him and read that, and I said, God, you just won't emphasize all that. It's one of my favorite passages. I mean, if you 
Sometimes when you get down and you're just wondering about where to go and to read, go to 1 Corinthians 13. Read that love chapter, okay? Uh, it's an amazing thing. And, and read it in several different versions. I'm going to read it in the, in the uh, uh, New American Standard this morning. But just think about it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. Love is not arrogant. Or um, love does not act becomingly. Or love is not rude. Um, love does not seek its own. It's not self-seeking. Uh, love is not provoked. Uh, love does not take into account wrong suffered. Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness um, or evil. There's your word evil, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never fails. That's the beauty of the love of God. Think about that and just read that over and over and over. I use that in every, uh, pretty much every wedding ceremony that I do just because of the emphasis there and, and what all it says for us. Think about that tremendous love. Think about that. That's the love that God, you want to know what God expects from me and you this morning? There it is. 1 Corinthians 13. Um, I mean, and, and the thing is, is really think about who God is and what he wants for us. Um, when you think about God's love for you, what have you done with that? I, I thought about that this week. God, just, just how have I treated you? God, how, how have I responded? Uh, this morning, have you ignored it? Ha have you laughed at it? Have you had people just laugh in the face of God? Um, have you had folks, or, or maybe you've rebelled against it? May maybe you shook your fist at heaven and you cursed God. Maybe you're at work this week and you heard somebody use the name of God in vain. You know, you, you, you hear a lot of things about that. Or on the other side, have you surrendered and you've obeyed and you're in obedience and, 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 and you're just submitted to God? I've asked you for weeks in different ways, are you where God wants you to be? Right now in life, are you where God wants you to be? If not, why? And just answer that question to God. That's, that's you and God because it's up to you, you know. The, the, the thing is, is um, in, in a life where we are, um, it's kind of a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. But it's not that way with God. A lot of times God does his part and we turn and walk away. But God still loves us. And God still scratches. And God still does what God needs to do in our life. God's love is consistent. It's great. It's mighty. Um, and when you look at it this morning, I want you to think with me there. Verse 18. I shared that with you a moment ago. But, you know, when you think about the unmatchable greatness of God, God's love is true even when you're condemned, even when you're judged, according to verse 18, already. And, and so he that ignores, he that rejects, he that refuses or mocks God, to love or even loves Jesus. The Bible says they're condemned, but God loves them. God's still knocking. God's still giving opportunities there. So that's what verse 18 is talking about. Even in the midst of that, God loves us. Look at verse 19. And this is the judgment that the light is coming to the world. Men love the darkness rather than the light. Here it is. God loves you even when you love sin more than you love God. What is sin? Anything that God is not of God, right? And God loves you and me even when we love sin more than we love God. You ever been there? Know somebody that's there in the midst of that? Loving sin more than God, just choosing to live in the muck and the mire, Man, if you've been there, I mean, I really don't want to ever go back there. I don't want to go back. And God still loves us when we choose sin over him. God still cares for us. That's the greatness of the love of God. That's the consistency of the love of God. I mean, when you think about that Romans 5, 8 there, while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for us. He, he, he sent Jesus. He died for us. A pretty amazing thing. Look at verse 20. 
Verse 20 says, For everyone who does, does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. So here's the other thing. God loves you even when you seek to avoid him. And there's a lot of people that want to avoid God. They want to just shy away from God. They want to avoid the light. They want to live in the darkness. But God still loves them. God's light will rebuke them so they avoid it, but yet God still loves them. That's amazing. When you, when you seek to avoid him and, and you know that rebuke is coming and, and, and God still cares. Let me make a statement to you this morning. You can't live in God's light. You cannot live in God's light when darkness is prevailing in your life. You cannot live in the light of God when you're allowing the darkness of sin to prevail in your life. It's not going to happen. Can't have your cake and eat it too. When somebody's living in the darkness of sin and they tell you that they're praying for you, They got to get right with God before they can pray for you. You understand that, right? How do, you, how do you get right with God? You go and you ask for forgiveness. Do you go back into the darkness? No, you turn away from it. Jesus died on the cross for you. Does God still love them when they don't turn away from the darkness? You betcha. It amazes me how we think that we can just turn the light switch on and off and and, and, you know, going back, God loves us. I'm going to be all right. No, uh, yeah, look, there, there's consequences. There's consequences to, the, to our actions. And that's what, what John's trying to teach there. If you're a child of God, then you've got to choose to live in the light. What is the light? The word, the truth, the way of God. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and darkness. Narrow is the way that leads to light in God. And you and I have a choice. The gate's wide open. One way's narrow, one way's wide. Where are you going to go? You got the choice, young people. You have a choice. You make the choices. Adults, you got choices. You can't live in the light of God when you're living in darkness and it prevails and sin prevails in your life. But just know God loves you. Let's talk about the third thing. We'll wrap it up. The greatness of God's love, the, the, the fact of God just, how the expanse of it, how it is, and God's love reaches, and how consistent the unconditional love, take the conditions off of his love, and just let God be God. Well, then I want to talk to you about the impact of it. The impact. When we think about believing, when the Word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Think about the impact of the world. I mean, the best thing you and I can do when we go back and read the Word of God and we read in the law and we see all of the stipulations of the law and we look at the Ten Commandments and you know you can't keep them and they didn't keep them. And you, you look at that, and then all of a sudden, uh, God's got enough. And at the end of the Old Testament there, he closes it up. And for 400 years, he doesn't speak again. And then when he comes on the scene again, it's Jesus Christ. It's the answer to nonconformance on the man side. And God just did it for us in Jesus Christ. The impact, supernatural impact of God's love in our life. I'm telling you, he changes lives. That's why he can take somebody from darkness and change them where they live in the light. Be thankful this morning uh, in the midst of this Thanksgiving week that you sit down and you be uh, thankful for your life change if you're born again. I mean, I hope your thought processes are different. I hope that things in your life are different because of Jesus Christ. I hope that you can sit down and say, my life is different as a result of. And, and you can just lay it out there because it's the impact of God's love. Now think about that impact. What has it had on, or, or how has God impacted your life? The Word of God says in, in, that, that he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through the world that the, the, or through him the world would be saved. Amazing there when you think about the impact of God's love. When you trust Jesus Christ, 
The results of his love changes your life. And as a result of trusting Jesus Christ, believing that he's the son of God, asking for forgiveness of sin, knowing that he died on Calvary's cross, he shed his blood for your sin, you accept that. You realize that there is no other way to God other than through Jesus Christ, and so you surrender your life to that, then according to the word of God in verse 21, that the light of God comes into your life. That's what happens. The only way for the light to come in your life, and listen, Christian, you can't live in the light of God and then go participate in the darkness and not be miserable. If you can do that, then you need to check your Christianity at the door. Something's wrong. You got to understand that. You can't go and live in the dark side of life and claim to live in the light of God. It doesn't work that way. I mean, it causes us to change jobs. It causes us to change friends. It causes us to change. Sometimes we got to move, relocate. But we got to make a decision. Are we going to glorify God or are we going to mix ourselves inside the world? It's an impact. It's a life changing impact and when you think about that when you think look at verse 21 let's just read it again but he who practices the truth comes to the light that his or her deeds may be revealed been wrought the the birthed in God, revealed, they're birthed in God. The, the old is gone, the new has come. You don't go back and live in the darkness because Jesus has changed your life. And when God shines his light, you know, it's fun to look at those uh, when you go have an x-ray. I love to, to see what the x-ray shows. Think about the light of God being that x-ray on our life every single day. Not, not to beat us down, but to show us where we are. And you think about that x-ray light of God and, and, and what he wants to do in our life. It's amazing what he reveals. Now, you can be a preacher and miss God. You can be a, a teacher. You can teach Sunday school. You can uh, be a parent and miss God. Wow. Get involved with the light, with the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let it shine through. It's God's amazing love. It's a revealing love. It's a revealing presence because he cares. He doesn't want to condemn us or harm us or anything like that, but we've got to come to him. You know, when you think about that revealing light, what we do with it? Those that are listening this morning, what we do with it? What is truth? When, when the word of God says that... Uh, he who practices the truth comes to the life. What, what is truth? I, I mean, when you think about that, we talked about what love is, God's love and the far-reaching love, and we talked about believing, but when we think about the truth, you know, God is a God of truth. God cannot lie. If God told a lie, then it's over with. But when we talk about truth, it's the reality, it's the firm, solid, binding integrity of God. And so that's what the Word of God's talking about when it says, from the standpoint of practicing the truth, that we practice the reality of the Word of God in our life. When we meet somebody, they ought to know that we're a child of God, just by who we are, by our example. Not that you're boasting or bragging or you're some uh, idiot or pervert or anything like that, but you're practicing the Word of God. You're doing what God wants you to do. And you're living in according to the word of God. And so the truth is that God gave Jesus, Jesus Christ. He died on a cross. The penalty of sin was paid on the cross by the blood of the lamb, the son of God. The perfect son of God, the perfect lamb of God. Shed his blood for you and me and everyone in the world. Red, yellow, black, and white. You got a race you don't like, you need to get over it. I don't even know if you can have the true love of God if you're a racist. I think God will blast that out of you. It's funny how we used to sing that song, Jesus Loves Me and Jesus Loves the Little Children of the World, Red, Yellow, Black, and White. Most of the time people didn't believe it. So many people think, well, Jesus came for the United States of America. 
No. Came for the world. Didn't say God created the United States of America. God created the world. Remember the little song we used to sing? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. He, he's got what? The little bitty baby? He's got you and me, sister, you and me, brother. You remember all that? Those are real. We're talking about the truth of God. And you and I need to understand it's a gospel that's far-reaching into the far ways of the world, to the person next door, to the people that sit in buildings like this and listen online. The far-reaching love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The whosoever, anybody that will place their faith and trust in him, they will not perish. That means die and go to eternal hell, but they would have eternal life. That's the amazing love of God. The cross, the only way to God. Is through the cross. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Praise team, make your way to the platform. Heads bowed, eyes closed this morning. I ask you, as you listen at home, just maybe to lower your head where you are. and You know, where are you in your relationship to God? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Are you, have you come to the light? Are you living in the light? <laughs> Are you living because Jesus has changed your life and you're trusting him this morning in the building? No better place to be than walking in the light. Some of us are trying to walk in the darkness and claim we're children of the light. It don't work. Some of us are miserable. Somebody uh, just wants to, to get out, tune it off, and turn it off, whatever. But I'm telling you, God loves you this morning more than anything in the world. Will you surrender to him this morning? What I do to surrender, Pastor, you ask the Lord Jesus as God's Son to come into your life, forgive you of your sin, and change your life. Realize that he died on the cross, and he's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to God. Would you just place your faith and trust right there, and would you surrender to him this morning? Would you pray and ask him to take your life and, and change it to help you to be who you need to be? If you'll do that this morning, he'll do it, I promise you. If you're online, if you would let us know, we'd love to talk with you uh, about that. If you're in the building this morning, the altars will be open and you come. Maybe somebody says, Pastor, I've given my life to Christ, but I've walked away from him. Would you come back to him this morning? Would you ask him to take your sin and forgive you of that? And you would turn from the darkness and you would turn to the light of God. Would you do that this morning? So many other things going on in life, and I know in a time like this, in awkward moments, but God still loves you, and God cares. These altars are open. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning, asking you, Lord, to touch lives, to touch souls, to save lives, to change from darkness to light. And God, to encourage discouraged folks this morning. God, to strengthen those who feel weak. God, to, to just let love resound in the lives of people. God, we need that love. We need your love. We need each other's love. And so, Lord, we pray this morning your blessings in this time, God, for your glory in Christ's name. Stand with us in the building. You guys lead us. You come this morning. These altars are open. I would ask you to social distance.
folks on the I campus. I want to pray with us, and then we'll dismiss you by Rose. Okay, thank you for being here this morning. Look for somebody to text or encourage uh, this week, and uh, just be blessed, all right? Remember those that we gave you to be praying for. Um, please intercede, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for just the cross. Thank you, God, that you loved your people so much, your creation so much that you sent Jesus, and he gave his life so that we might have forgiveness of sin, God. Father, I pray that we would look for somebody to share the gospel with this week, that we would share John 3.16 and just tell them, God, about Jesus and the cross and the life change. And God, those that we know that are living in darkness, God, that we would show them and teach them and help them to come to the light. God, that we would speak the truth in love when we know somebody's in darkness, they're not where they need to be, that we wouldn't go along with it, God, but we would speak the truth, the light, breathe into the darkness of their life so they can have hope. God, I pray you'd bless your folks this morning as they leave this building and go into a world that desperately needs Jesus Christ. God, cause us to touch lives, I pray, for your glory, God, and your glory alone. Thank you for this time of worship in Christ's name. Amen. Our guys will dismiss you from the